We're currently going through our series, Design for Relations. By the way, I'm Bojo Manifash. If this is your first time here in Victor Greenhouse, welcome to our afternoon service. Uh, we have three services every Sunday, 10, 2, and 5. Um, so I need to pace myself because I'm preach at 5 p.m. So don't get too excited, Bojo. Okay. Um, so this is our third, uh, what did I say? Third week, yes, of our series designed for relationships. Last week, if you were here, we talked about following Jesus. And that's really the foundation, the root of what it means to be a follower of Christ. Siyempre, we follow Jesus. We don't follow a pastor. We don't follow a church. We follow the person of Jesus Christ. And uh, we need to realize that as we continue to follow him, we, we begin to discover our purpose. We be to begin to realize that he has given us a mission to fulfill. And this mission, this purpose that the Lord has given us, I hope you understand, tipo natin kaya magisa. We can't do it on our own. We can't fulfill the purpose, the mission that God has for us. Yes, he has a unique purpose for each and every one of us, but it's all aligned to his greater purpose. And it's something we cannot do on our own. Ibig sabihin, we all need each other. Tell the person beside you, I need you. All right? I need you. Yes, we all need each other. We need help from one another. We need community to help us to continue to grow and to fulfill the mission and the purpose that God has for each and every one of us. This is a picture of my wife and I's uh, couples group, okay? Um, we've been meeting since last year. Uh, it's weird, it's funny because um, before this, I sabi ko sa sarili ko, ayoko mag-lead ng married couples. Uh, or a married group. Kasi, daming problema eh. Pag married, tama ba? <laughs> Hindi. Hindi, <Hey>, sabi. <laughs> Di daw, oh, Joanne, oh, natin mo niyan ha. <laughs> Wala daw. <laughs> and, 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 but we realized that, syempre, tumatanda na yung mga tao sa group namin. Actually, most of the guys here were already part of my victory group. Uh, been meeting for the longest time. And most of the ladies there were part of my wife's group. So, sabi ko, Parang mabawasin yung time natin kasi she would have her meeting, then I would have mine. So, niyaisip namin. And most of them naman are in our groups. Why don't we just put the couples group together? So, that's just the, make a long story short. But, you know, it has been just a fun time. We only meet once a month, but it's just really a time of gathering, of sharing stories, you know, uh, you know how, building each other's faith, how we can encourage one another. Because marriage is not easy. Tama ba? If you look in Ephesians 5, what Paul is telling uh, husband and wives, the analogy, the metaphor that he uses of Christ and the church, we're supposed to reflect Christ, uh, the way that Christ loves the church in our marriage. And that is no easy task. Kaya po natin isa to help us to continue to grow, to be a better husband, to reflect what is said in the scriptures, and of course to be a, a wife as reflected in scriptures. And these are just some of the couples that my wife and I get to walk with. Of course, uh, our, our fellow pastors as well, we get to meet with them, get to walk with them as well in faith, sharing hopes and dreams, learning from one another. Um, you see, fellowship is actually very simple. Uh -huh. Fellowship is simply walking together when following after Jesus and pursuing his purposes together. Ganun ka simple lang. Fellowship, that's what it is. And that's what we are to do together. To follow Jesus together, fulfill his purpose together. To share who he is, which we'll talk about more uh, next week. And how many of you can agree na masaya talaga to have community, to share uh, meals together? Uh, to have fun today, to do, uh, ko sila Abed, the, they love to go uh, uh, on their motorbikes and just go all the way far away from their wives and di palayan, no? just to go far on a road trip. Uh, hey? um, you know, and, and it's, it's just the community doing things together, having that fellowship, uh, hey? encouraging one another. Um, but here is the reality. There will be instances where disagreements will arise between Christians, between people in church. There will be Arguments. Yes, there will be arguments. There will be heated discussions. Uh -huh. um, there will be offense. There will be hurt. There will be pain. That is the reality that we live in. 
Kahit Kristiyano yan, kahit matagal kang Kristiyano sa simbahan, you've been following Jesus for all the days of your lives, you love him with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, I'm sure at one point or another, you were offended, and you offended somebody else as well. And so, when these things happen, what then? What do we do? Ano na? All right. Yesterday, we published on our social media our discipleship podcast stories. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe, or better yet, uh, check out our Discipleship Stories podcast. We invite people from our church community to share their own discipleship stories or their own lives and how, what God is doing in their lives. And this here is Karen Ibasco. She is actually part of our Victory Taf Church. Um, she, is Miss, she holds the title of Miss Earth 2017. And uh, you know, we invited her especially uh, to, to talk about uh, you know, her life in following after Christ, especially for this month, this is Women's Month. Um, and one of the things she said was you know, uh, talking about aligning oneself with people of the same values. And she, was, she went on to say how even sa simbahan, even sa church, you know, parang hindi naman lahat pareho pareho lang yung mga, yung mga values per se. I mean, all of us, man, we all have the common ground of Christ. But some people value, let's say, um, uh, family. Okay? Some value more their independence. Or maybe for some, they value, uh, you know, gaming. Some value sports. And so, she was saying, ganun din, in the church, um, there are people who are very different. And she said, you see, the church is imperfect because I'm there. We're all still being changed by God Himself, and that's when I when I heard that I was like, yes, that is very true. Lahat naman po tayo, we cannot expect a fellow Christian to have it all together, to have it all right, to have a perfect life. Because lahat po tayo, we are all imperfect. We're all still being sanctified by the Spirit of God. We're all still being changed from the inside out. Yes, we are saved by Christ alone. Yet He is still working in us. How many of you, from the moment you got saved, you still sinned? God is still working in our lives. And if you look at the story that we're going to be looking at today, the disciples themselves had their own fair share of disagreements. I mean, if you just look at their backgrounds, you would look at them and say, wow, talagang, I don't know how they did it, how they stuck together all of those years. Nakaklash talaga sila. Yet they still, you know, fought for the unity and the peace with one another. And the passage that we'll be looking at today, in this particular instance where the disciples were arguing with one another, who is the greatest? And what was the response of Jesus when they had this heated discussion? Now, let me give context. This is found in Mark chapter 9, towards the end, where Jesus responds to them arguing with one another, who's the greatest? I'm the greatest. No, you're not the greatest. I'm the greatest. They're away sila. And how did this discussion, how did this argument come about? If you look in Mark chapter 9, the beginning, okay, it started where Jesus uh, was with his disciples, all 12 of them, but he takes three with them to this mountain, Peter, James, and John. And in this mountain was... The scripture tells us was the transfiguration where Elijah and Moses met with Jesus. And Peter, James, and John were witnesses to this. Imagine, nakita nila, they recognized. I don't even know how they recognized it as Elijah or Moses. I don't know. Um, but they had identified that Jesus was with uh, Elijah and Moses, a great men of the word, great men of their uh, ancestry that they had the privilege of witnessing. Okay? And so, they, and, and before they go down, okay, they, Jesus tells them, Wag mo sa iba, ha? don't tell anybody about what you saw. And so, now this part is not written in scripture, but I can just imagine, they saw this thing, only three of them, the other disciples, they were down there sleeping. Jesus tells them, don't tell, them, don't tell anyone. Huh? They go down. Ano sa tingin mo? What was their stance? What was their posture? You did not see what I saw. 
I'm sure the other disciples they were saying, Oi, ano yan? Ano but they were probably telling him, What happened up there? What happened? They were, they were so curious about what happened. What's it? What, what, can you tell us all about it? But they were saying, We cannot tell you because you're only ordinary disciples. Oh, baka ganun. Okay. Oh, that's just my imagination lang is playing. Okay, that's not what's written in the Bible. But you can just imagine okay, that they were probably looking at them as uh, inferior. Silang Peter, James, and John. I am much closer to Jesus than you, oh, diba? They looked at themselves as so much more superior. And so, maybe because of that, they started arguing, I'm the greatest, diba? I'm the greatest follower of Jesus. I'm the greatest disciple. I'm the greatest in the kingdom of God. Nag-aaway sila habang naglalakad sila. And Jesus was at a distance, but he already knows what they're talking about. Because uh, Jesus tells them, Uy, what are you guys talking about? Even though the distance, alam naman ni Jesus, he was just waiting for them to confess. But the Bible says they were actually embarrassed. They kept their response. If you look at scripture, it says they kept silent because they know that what they were talking about, their discussion, wasn't something that was pleasing to Jesus. It wasn't something that was honorable. It was actually very petty. And nagawa sila because of this. Who is the greatest? But Jesus, if you notice, I, I might go ahead of myself. Jesus responds to disciples in Mark 9, verse 35. We'll pick it up from verse 35. Ayan, gumana. Ayan, verse 35. He sat down and called the 12. And he said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Now what's interesting here, nag sila, Jesus does not rebuke them. Jesus does not call them out, ano ba kayo? nag ko na naman. No. He actually tells them, ah, ganun ba? Well, if you want to be the greatest, and he actually goes on to share, which we'll dive into, what it looks like or what it means to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. But here's one thing I want us to take note of. Jesus does not rebuke them for wanting to be great. The, Jesus does not rebuke them for wanting to succeed. Why? I believe greatness, the will to succeed, the will to be excellent, the will to do something be above and beyond ourselves, I believe is something that is ingrained in us. It's part of how God created us. How many of you felt that, that you have your nine to five job and you're like, you feel that there's something more? Have you ever felt that? If you've been employed and you feel, I feel I need to do something else. I feel that there's something more to this life. Yeah. That is part of how God created us, to excel, to do something great. Because ultimately, God created us for him who is great. Therefore, we are to do great things for him, okay? And so Jesus, point, now, and so Jesus points out that the true way to greatest, as we hear in the scriptures, is if you want to be first, you need to be last. It's not about wanting people to serve you where you're on top, ikaw yung master, everyone's serving you. He says, actually, ikaw dapat yung servant of all. It's the other way around. You wanna be great? Serve others, help others, think of others, encourage others, stop thinking about just yourself. That's what Jesus is trying to point out here. And so Jesus takes a child and he uses this child as an illustration to begin to explain what greatness looks like. In verse 36, he says, he took a child and put him in the midst of them, taking him in his arms, all right? And so, what Jesus goes on to explain, I believe is something we have to keep in mind. Yes, if you look at the context, it, Jesus is talking about being the greatest in the kingdom. But if you read through it, what Jesus actually shares with the disciples, using the child as an illustration, is in the context of relationships. Particularly, I believe, if you look at the, the Mark 9, it's in the context of relationships of, with people who are also fellow believers. And so that's what I want us to keep in mind as we go through this. What can we do to reflect Christ towards one, an, towards one another, fellow believers, and what can we do to reflect Christ to the people out there who need to know who Christ is as well? All right, in verse 37, Mark 9, 37, Jesus says, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. When Jesus says to receive, another 
uh, description or definition of that is to accept. To accept someone, to accept this person who, uh, uh, who so wants a child in my name. So accept somebody who is a fellow believer. Accept someone who carries the name of Christ, Christian. Okay? And so, you know, how many of you guys, okay, you know, at times, you know, we, we tend to accept people, right? Not all of us are accepting of people. That's the truth, okay? And we tend to accept people based on what they can do for us. Kung ano yung benefit natin. Tama ba? We, we, we tend to uh, see, accept this person, oh, magiging friend kita, kasi we look, better maybe in front of people because they're our friend, especially if they're a person of power and position or, or something like that, of a reputation. It prompts us up. If we begin to associate, if this person is my friend, we accept them as a friend, it makes us look good in the eyes of others. You know, take for example, if you go to the restaurant, the Choi, in the promenade, you say the name Larry Uy. Meron kang libreng uh, uh, shawmai. Okay? They joke lang yan. Okay? Di ba, misa ganun tayo eh. Kaibigan ko si Larry Uy. Mag-name drop tayo. Di ba? The power of the name. The, the power of associ- association. The power of the friends, the relationships we, are, we have. And so we accept all of these people para lang may connections tayo. Para may advantage tayo. Di ba? We're only thinking about ourselves. And talking about name drop, John recalls an incident as Jesus was talking about this. Nung sinabi niya, in my name. Baka na ni John, take lang, Lord. As we see in the next verse, in verse 38, parang, this is what happened. Somebody actually used your name. What does he say? Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. Like name drop, Lord. They used your name, but they're not a disciple. They're not one of us. Yeah? And we tried to stop him. Because uh, for us, parang marian. You haven't gone through what we have gone through. You haven't gone through the same training we have gone through. You haven't gone through one to one. Hindi ka nag victory weekend, nima. And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. He was not doing what we were doing. Reading that alone, how many of us sometimes we tend to be like that, where we look at people and we say. Take lang. You wait your turn. I had to do this and do that and do that. You have to do all these things before you can actually do ministry, before you can actually volunteer, before you can actually lead other people, before you can actually share the gospel. No. All right? And John was very troubled by this. And he comes to Jesus, Lord. Grab the manto, Lord. They're not one of us. I don't even know who he is. I, 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 we don't even know his background. Where, anong classing training na meron siya? We don't know, Lord. And what John is trying to do is try to get a confirmation of his bias. Okay, Lord. Lord, Lord, di ba? Mali yan, di ba, Lord? And what does Jesus say? Jesus tells him, do not stop him. Don't stop him. For no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able to will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Verse 40, for the one who is not against us is for us. Jesus is saying, eh, kung itong tao na to, he was able to cast out demons, then God actually, I believe, moved in that. Kasi you cannot just cast out demons just like that, diba? Si God lang talaga yun eh. And so Jesus is saying, but it worked, right? Demons are gone. The guy is okay. The guy who had all the demons in him, okay naman siya, diba? All right? And so, Jesus was trying to tell them, in a way, if I can read into it, that, okay, maybe this person doesn't have all of it right. But the fact that he used the name of Jesus means that there was something about Jesus that he believes, that he put his faith in. That's why when he cast out the demons, he used the name of Jesus because he knew that there was something different about the name of Jesus, that there is power in the name of Jesus. Kaya ginamit niya yung pangalan ni Jesus. So why reject this person who has faith? Maybe not as much faith as you guys, pero may faith naman siya. And he moved in faith, he acted in faith. Maybe the method was wrong. Maybe the words he said were wrong. Okay. 
Yet, why are you rejecting him? Just because he doesn't do what you did. Jesus is saying, don't reject people because they don't know everything yet or because they're just learning or just because they're starting out in their faith. Actually, you know what, John? If you would encourage that person, lead with that person, who knows? Maybe they might be a great disciple, a great apostle one day. Malay natin. But the initial reaction was already, bawal yun. Not you. I reject you. A couple of years ago, I, I started a training for kids. As a kids pastor, I felt burdened to equip our children, our young people, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, we feel that some of the things that we do as adults, whether it's ministry, casting out demons like this, or you know, prophesying, moving, praying for healing, believing God of all of these things, parang feeling natin pang adult lang yan. You have to have, be a certain age, a certain maturity in the faith to be able to do such things. And so, ako, I don't believe there is a junior Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that is in you and me is the same Holy Spirit that is in our children today. And so, I did this training, and, you know, there, uh, just to let you know, I, I, I move in the prophetic. Ibig sabihin, I go around in some of our churches ministering to people, uh, exhorting them and strengthening them and encouraging them and comforting them based on a word that the Lord has for them for that season, whatever they're in their life. And so we got invited to a, uh, a presbytery, prophetic presbytery, and I brought three of our young kids along with me. And the, at this time, so this was several years ago, they're teenagers now, uh, si Gabby, si Tashi, and si Steph. But back then, Gabby and Tashi were only 10, and Steph was 11, turning 12 at that time. And so, these are some of our young kids who went through the training, who we empowered to move in the gifts that the Lord has given them, to move in the gift of prophecy, and they were prophesying. And a lot of the people who, well, actually, this was a kids' presbytery sa Victory Ortigas, Many of them were encouraged, many of them were blessed because they were able to apply and use this gift that the Lord has given them. And many times we can look at young kids like that, wait your turn, pag tumanda ka na, then you can do this. But no, we can empower them as young as they are, accept them, accept what the Lord is doing in their lives and what they can do at a young age. You see, many people who are young in the faith, and when I say young in the faith, it can be some of our students who just got saved maybe a year or two ago, or it can be older people who just got saved last month. You need to be young in the faith. Um, And so many people who are young in the faith tend to give up. Why? Because there there, there are times where there are people who are older in the faith who, uh, who sort of put out that fire that they had, maybe by saying words na maliyan, hindi pa dapat ganun, di ba? Where this is how we did it before, dapat ganito. And it, a stickler for rules, parang yung mga young in the faith na, ha, huh, so hindi pwede, okay. They get pushed back, and they, they get put down because what they did was wrong, it wasn't how it was done before, and many of these people who are young in the faith, what happens? Ayoko na. They leave. They leave the church. The other way around as well. Those who are uh, young in the faith sometimes disregard the people who are older in the faith who are trying to help them naman, who make good intentions naman. But lagi nilang sinasabi na parang old school ka na. You are too traditional. Gano ka lang. You will never change. Dapat ganito kasi. It works both ways, guys. All right? And because of this tension that happens in the church, and this is a reality, those who are young in the faith, shampoo leave. Those who are the older in the faith, diba? Uh, sometimes they leave. Especially if the pastors tend to focus on the next generation. But that's really what we're called to do as a victory. All right? But let me encourage us that to be accepting of one another wherever they are in their faith. 
Whether they're a day, in the old, day old in the faith, 10 years old in the faith, I hope we would move to accept them, move in kindness and love, rather than reject them outright or even neglect them. Maybe accept one another wherever they are in the faith. Treat everyone the same as children of God, as brothers and sisters in the faith. Don't reject people just because they don't know what you know. Don't just reject people because they don't know what you know. Move in accepting one another. Just like Jesus said, receive one of these children just as you will receive me. Verse 41, Jesus says, for truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Verse 42, he says there, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Alam yung mga millstone, okay? Hindi to, it's like the mother version of yung mga uh, mortar and pestle, okay? Yung millstone was used to uh, grind the grain, okay? And so, it was so big that it needed, minsan yung mga ox to push it around just to be able to grind the grain. And so Jesus, medyo drastic yung illustration ni Jesus, no? Kunin mo yan, yung malaking millstone na yan, tie it around your neck and just jump off the cliff. That's Jesus. Why? It's better to do that than to cause one of these little ones to sin. Now, it's not necessarily referring to children per se, but those who are young in the faith. If you're gonna cause one of the people who are just a day old in the faith, who their fire in their hearts has just been lit, and you cause them to stumble, just jump off the cliff. He's gonna say, Jesus. It's better for you to do that instead. Wow, that's pretty up, uh, confrontation up front of Jesus to say something like that, okay? Better for you to do that. You see, offense is part of uh, relationships, okay? All of us, I believe, have been offended one time or another. Or maybe even ourselves have offended others. I remember, um, I share it I just have to pick my words. So there was a, a uh, milestone, ah, milestone, eh, no? Milestone in my life na, siyempre, may mga tao, you know, post online, uh, their greetings, okay? And there was one person, actually, pastor siya, eh, na, wala ko nang-receive, kahit text, kahit walang post, comments, sa, sa social media, medyo na-offend ako, ah. Sabi ko, did I do something? Does he not, do they not know? And it was bugging me, alam mo yun, parang, Lahat naman nag-sabi, nag-acknowledge, nag-message. And I was just waiting for this. Wala ba talaga? And I hurt talaga ako, ha? Hindi ko sinabi sa asawa ko. I'm just telling, she only knows it now that I'm sharing with all of you. <laughs> Until I realized that there was something going on in their lives as well. And I'm holding to something so petty and they're going through something that's really overwhelming in their lives. So why am I still holding on to this when I can encourage them, be there for them? And so I just let it go. And many times we hold on to those little petty things that keep us from reconnecting, that keep us from actually being there for one another, helping one another. Because, hindi, I hurt ako dito eh. No offend ako dito. Dapat sila lalapit sa akin. Why should I be the one? Ayan, mga ganon, di ba? The truth of the matter is, all of us have offended others one time or another, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Mas mahirap talaga yung unintentionally. Minsan may mag-message sa akin, ha, talaga? Sorry, ha? <laughs> di, ko na, di ko intention talaga. But I hope we move in that attitude of reconciliation, of forgiveness, of moving in reflecting Christ. Because yun yung gusto naman ni Lord talaga eh. 
not for us as people of God to walk our separate ways, but to always move in forgiveness, in reconciliation, in restoration. We're all being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. We're all still growing, allowing him to transform us from the inside out. Verse 41, going back to verse 41 in the NIV, it says, truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. What Jesus says gives you a cup of water that speaks of kindness. It speaks of walking and moving in blessing another person. And Jesus is saying, do that. Means kasi yung verse 41 and verse 42, masyado tayo na focus of verse 40. Kasi talagang shock and awe, na parang, whoa, I shouldn't do that. But sometimes we miss out on verse 41, where it says, give a cup of water, be kind to one another, bless one another, speak life to one another. And if you put the two together, okay, we can say that we are to walk in kindness, that we are to walk in, in generosity and blessing towards one another. At the same time, we are to bless, uh, we are to build the spiritual lives of one another. Build the spiritual lives of one another. What can we do to uplift their faith? What can we do to let them, uh, to help them in their struggle, in the challenges that they're experiencing right now in their faith, in their walk with the Lord? What can we do to help them when they're struggling with the time that they need to be able to read their Bibles? What can we do when there's something that happened in their life that is uh, causing anxiety and worry? What can we do to be there for them? To bless them, to help encourage their spiritual growth, their spiritual lives. This entails helping each other grow in the Lord, being there for one another, speaking life to one another. This is a picture of uh, isapang victory group ko, mga single men. Um, and you know, I enjoy. Actually, we just had our victory group earlier, and I enjoy the times I spend with these men. Um, and what I love about this is. You know, it's not just me sharing the word. Yes, I do share the word. We take time to pray. We take time to share. But I always tell them, Ikaw, anong sa tingin mo? What's your thought about this? And means and it will end up tatlo apat na preaching. <laughs> or tatlo apat na sharing okay, of the word. And there was one time, one of uh, our, uh, the guys in our group, see Ryan, who's now has moved to the U.S., he was sharing. And medyo bago siya nun. Diba, yeah, no, na, medyo bago pa si Ryan no, and he, I invited him to join our group and uh, we didn't really know him that well but he started pouring out his heart started pouring out all of these things and we were like okay, we were just listening there and uh, I, lo- I love that see AB, who was part of our Victory group um, grabbed the opportunity you know, to speak life in what he was going through at that time the situation he was experiencing that time. And he was sharing based on his experience and how the Lord helped him through that and he was just encouraging him, just speaking life, just building up his faith. And I was just encouraged by that. I just said, go AB, but preach ka. Just share, just bless him, just encourage him. And, 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 and for me, that's a picture of a victory group. Hindi lang isang tao yung leader na share, but it's one another speaking life, encouraging one another. All right. Whatever the word was for that person today, that can be a word that can encourage, that can bless, that can minister to one another, encouraging one another. Let's build the spiritual lives of one another. In verse 43, Jesus says, and if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell to the unquenchable fire Verse 44, and if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell. And in verse 48, uh, he says here, verse 48, 49, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. Now, if you just read that, itong passage alone, medyo parang, whoa, teka lang. If my sin causes me to, if my hand causes me to sin, I'm going to cut it off. Diba? Siyempre, 
you know, it's not something that's literal. But what I want to focus on here is verse 49, which, and I'll get back to what it says in 43 to 48. Jesus says, for everyone will be salted with fire. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Jesus is talking about being the greatest. Jesus is talking about receiving and giving cup of water and all these things. And big lang fire, salt with fire and water. And, uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so everyone will be salted with fire. What does that mean? If you look at the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, it says when they would offer their, their offerings, diba? Union law. When you sin, get an offering, the best of your crop, or the, the, the purest of lambs, bring it to the temple to offer it unto the Lord. And when they do that, part of the law says you have to add salt. You add salt to the offering. Also in Ezra, when the Israelites were exiled, wala na sila sa town nila in their city. They're exiles living in another country. Uh-huh. Part of the law or what was necessary during that time was salt. They still offered offerings, yet they were reminded once again, you need to add salt to your offerings as they will be burned at the altar. Okay? And so that was the picture that G was giving. And so when you, lahat mga tao, when they were, the disciples, when they were listening to this, nagets nila. Tai, we don't have anything like this. That's why we need to dive, dive deeper to, to understand the context of what it says to be salted with fire. You see, fire is a picture of judgment. It speaks of the refining process that we need to go through. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter three, it talks about fire revealing whether Jesus is the foundation of our lives. If you read through 1 Corinthians 13, the Apostle Paul is, makes mention of fire as the refining fire that will burn away all the impurities and will determine kung si Jesus talaga yung foundation ng buhay natin. And so that's what he talks about there. All right? Just to give us a, a picture of the representation of fire. And so whether we have been able to live out what Jesus is saying in verses 43 to 48, to not sin, if you, this hand causes you to sin, cut it out. If your leg, if your eyes causing you to sin, cut it out. Okay? Jesus is making reference to this. Do not do these things. Live a pure and holy life. Free yourselves from the sins and temptations of the world so that when you come before the fire, all will be revealed, that it is Christ who is at the center of it all. All right? And so Jesus is basically saying, if I can sum it up, make it more simpler for us to understand, Jesus is saying, don't take sin lightly. All right? Don't take sin lightly. You know, if there's a relationship in your life that is leading you to sin, cut it off. But pastor, you don't understand. I love her. Pero may asawa siya. And I wish I was making this kind of stuff up. But this is the reality. May lalapit sa amin. Counseling. Pastor, anong gagawin ko? Okay, share mo, ano yun? And they will share all these things. But you're living in sin, brother. Cut it off. You see, we can't take and we should not take sin casually, lightly, just treat it as just another day. No. There's a reason why Jesus died on the cross. It's because of sin. There's a reason why Jesus had to come here on earth to go through the pain and suffering, to go through all those lashes, to be nailed on the cross for you and I, and that's because of sin. Because that's how serious it is to Jesus. So we can't take sin lightly. Huh? Oh, you know what? The Lord will forgive me. Oh, you know what? May Sunday na money. Oh, you know what? Nagayatin ako ng Victor Group. Oh, we can't. If we take sin lightly, if we just treat it as something casually, then we haven't really understand the gospel of Jesus Christ because the Bible says in Titus 2.11, it's the grace of God that teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to worldly passions. 
So if we freely give ourselves to sin, have we truly understood the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have we truly accepted the grace that the Lord gave his life for, for you and I? Because we can't take it lightly. That visual that Jesus is saying, yes, it's like, wow, grab in a man. To cut off this, to gouge your eyes out. Because that's how serious sin is to Jesus. But it doesn't end there in verse 49. In verse 50, Jesus says this as well. You see, he says, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. What does he say there? Salt is good. How many guys like salt in your food? All right. I love salt in my food. All right. it's, it's good, it adds flavor, especially during the time of Jesus. Salt was very vital. It was a necessity of life for the people during the time of Jesus in, the, in Bible times. It preserved fo- food. It was also like a purifying agent. So again, let's cover it in salt. To wash away whatever impurities. It made things taste better. Another passage of scripture tells us in Matthew 5.13 that we are to be salt of the earth. As Christ's followers, we are salt of the earth. What does that mean? It means that we are to go into the world to bring flavor, to add life, to bring forth the blessings of the Lord to the people around us. Deva? Add salt, add life that comes from Jesus to the world around us. Living a life of obedience and fulfilling the purposes of God in doing so. Jesus says salt is good and he points out that, uh, that salt can actually lose its saltiness. He begs to be in, even though we are followers of Christ, we are called to be salt of the earth, it's possible for us to lose our saltiness, okay? Where, you know, maybe it's because of uh, sin that has entangled us, that keeps us from fulfilling the purposes of the Lord. Going back to verse 43 to 48, it's a warning of Jesus. You can lose your saltiness if you continue to go down that life of sin. Don't do that. Don't lose your saltiness. Continue to be the salt of the earth. So how can one keep on sinning? And, I mean, how can one keep on sinning and yet live a life of being to God? You can't, okay? We can't be a salt of the earth yet walk in sin. And so Jesus tells them and encourages them that this last line, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Jesus is saying, I want you guys to be full of salt. Fill yourselves with as much salt so that you can go out and be a salt to the earth. I want you to live at peace with each other. Because when you do that, when you're full of salt, living at peace with one another, alam mo, yung mga ibang tao, sasabihin nila sa'yo, ano meron? How are you guys able to live in this sort of peace and harmony? All right? And we'll be able to acknowledge them, point them to the peace that comes from Christ. And I was thinking about this. Ano kayo sa sabi ng mga disciples? If somebody would come to them and tell them, Hi, Peter. Hi, James. Can I ask you a question? Bakit parang iba kayo? You guys are all different, yet there is so much peace amongst you guys. And I, I was just imagining what could possibly be the response of the disciples. Huh? Kabe? Do you know who we are? We are far from being peaceful people. I, I actually think you, can, you wouldn't want to join us. Kasi sobrang wild, crazy talaga kami. I mean, just think of James and John. Alam mo yung nicknames nila? Sons of Thunder. Sons of Thunder. Very aggressive sila, very insensitive sila. Ganun sila sila, James and John. They will just say whatever is on their mind. Si Philip, ay grabe si Philip. Si Philip, ang kulit niya grabe. He would always ask these questions. He would ask these random questions na talagang, ha, saan galing yun? 
You know, when, when Jesus was saying in, in, in John chapter 14, if you know me, you know the Father. If you uh, accept me, you, the Father is accepting you, something like that. And then Philip asked, Ah, ba, Lord? Singing, can you please show us the Father? Diba? Ganun si Philip. Ang labo niya talaga. Si Thomas, ay, iba pa yun, si Thomas. Thomas doesn't take anything at face value. Kahit sasabihin namin, Thomas, we have seen Jesus, we have seen his hands, the nail, he is alive. Show me. Where is he? I need to experience it for myself. Ganun si Thomas. He will not take anything at first face value. Okay? That's what, that's how we were. That's how we are as disciples, as people of God. Okay? But what has brought them together, in spite of all of these things, is Christ. What unites them is Christ. You see, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that unites one Christian with another. That's why they're able to go about, even though they have, they have crazy personalities, they're able to go about fulfilling the purposes of God. Bakit? It's Jesus who brings them. It's Jesus who unites them together. It's Jesus who allows them to live in peace with one another. In spite of their arguments, in spite of their pettiness, it's Jesus who brings them together. You know, when we begin to dwell on the things that aren't rooted in the gospel, that's where the offense will arise, that's where the hurts will come, that's where offense will easily be spread, but that's why we always need to go back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. As followers of Christ, may we always go back to who he is. And here's the thing, if we stray from the gospel of Jesus Christ, if we begin to fight with one another, argue with one another, ano mangyayari? We lose face in the eyes of the world around us. We lose the opportunity to share who Jesus is. Kasi kung sasabihin nila, ah, ganun ba yung mga Kristiyano? Ayoko na. I don't want anything to do with that. Kung ganun kayo, nag-aaway lang kayo, you just fight one another on social media, on different issues, on all these things, I don't want anything to do with that. Kung ganun yung mga Kristiyano, we lose the opportunity to engage them with the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm, uh, I'm following several people uh, on Twitter who are pastors, ministers in the US, and man, grabe, iba yung American Christian Twitter. I don't, I don't recommend it. Lagi silang nag lagi silang this side and this side. Wow, it's so overwhelming. Talagang nasa-stress nga ako eh, just thinking about it. And I hope that doesn't become us as a people of God. Where people will say, ganun ba yung mga Christiano? Sana hindi. I hope that when people see us, they would s- declare this as Jesus said in John 11:35, by this all men will know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. We lose the opportunity to fulfill what Jesus says here if we continue to hold on to offense, to hold on to the unforgiveness, to hold on to the pettiness, if we don't choose to move in love and reconciliation and kindness and acceptance of one another. So what can we do to reflect the name of Jesus towards one another and to those around us? Allow the gospel to refine us that we may live in peace with one another. Going back to the fire, to be salted with with fire. Allow the fire of the Lord, of the gospel of Jesus Christ to refine us, to say, okay, this thing, I need to give it up. This sin that I'm holding on to, I need to surrender before the Lord. This unforgiveness, I need to let go so that we can be at peace with one another. It is Christ who has brought us together. It is Christ who will continue to keep us together in peace, in love, and in serving one another. And as we do this, I do believe that others will be drawn to Christ, not to a church, not to us per se, but to Christ himself. As I end, 
I want to share this quote by Tim Keller, who's a pastor in the U.S. Sabi niya, people are messy. Therefore, relationships will be messy. So don't be surprised by messiness. Ibig sabihin, we will go through, uh, you know, offense and hurt because relationships are messy. Relationships in church can get really messy. I'm telling you, there will be conflict, there will be disagreements, there will be offense, there will be people getting hurt, there will be people who are holding on to unforgiveness. But part of following after Christ again is moving in reconciliation, is moving in forgiveness, in love towards one another. The gospel of Jesus is what we hold on to. Not our hurt, not our offense. I hope we hold on to the gospel of Jesus Christ instead. Let me summarize it. In order for us to walk in fellowship, in reflecting Christ towards one another and to a world that needs Christ, may we be accepting of one another, no matter where we are, they are in their faith. May we build each other in their spiritual walk and their spiritual journey in following after Christ. And may we allow the gospel to refine us, to remove the things that don't please God, to remove the things that aren't glorifying to his name so that we may live at peace with one another. To be able to do these things, it's not something that we just, I hope we don't just keep as head knowledge, but I hope it's something that we become intentional about. Building one another, encouraging one another. We need to be intentional about it. Going back to what I said earlier about the, what my personal definition of fellowship is walking together in following after Jesus and pursuing his purposes together. This is something we need to do intentionally. I hope we don't just wait for somebody to say, Oi, tara, let's walk together, let's follow Jesus. I hope we take the initiative to walk with a fellow believer in fellowship so that we can follow Christ together, pursuing all that he has for us. Let me end with a story. I shared earlier a picture of our couple's uh, victory group. To the far right, your far right, is Rex and Anna, who, you know, Rex was never in my victory group. Uh, see, Anna wasn't part of Rana's victory group. But when they saw that we started a couples group, they messaged us saying, Pastor Bojo, is it okay if we join your couples group? Uh, you know, we want to learn from you and all those things. I'd be like, sure, no problem. And so we welcomed them, we invited them to our group, and they've been with us uh, since last year until they moved to uh, New Zealand. They migrated to New Zealand, New Zealand just last month, uh, last January, uh, to uh, build a new life for themselves. And you know, I, I admire Rex and Anna. Um, their heart to really have encourage people. And they themselves have their own couples group leading others to Christ, discipling men and women. Um, and you know, they're so intentional about building relationships, connecting with people. Just last week, they messaged us asking, Pastor Bojo, can we uh, 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 talk with you? Can we, can we Zoom together? Can we go online together? And uh, we met with them, Ron and I, and we were just sharing, and uh, they were sharing what has been happening. We were laughing together. We were, you know, we prayed together. And I'm sharing this because they were intentional. And if you want to have that same growth in your spiritual walk, I hope we also are intentional. I hope we don't just wait, when is somebody going to make me pansen? When is somebody going to invite me? I'm just here. I hope we are old enough to take the initiative, to be intentional. Nandito lang po kami. Your pastors, your leaders, to help you walk out the purposes that the Lord has for you, to walk with you in community, to share life with each and every one of you. Amen? Can I invite everyone to stand to their feet as we pray? 
Lord, we thank you, Father God, for today. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for allowing us to follow after you. Lord, we thank you, Father, for community. Thank you, Lord God, that we don't have to walk out this life alone in pursuing you, but we have one another, that we have people, men and women, that we can lock arms with to share life with, to share our troubles, to share our problems, to share what we're going through, to share our hopes, to share our dreams, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, that you would cause us to be surrounded with men and women, Lord God. May we take that initiative as well, Lord God, to get connected, to be part, to be involved, Father God. Lord, even today, I pray for everyone here today that, we would, that you would give us those people. Give us those people that we can build together with, that we can build your kingdom with together. Even right now, I just want to pray for some people here today. Going back to the refining fire of, of the Lord. You know, maybe for some of us here today, there are some things that the Lord is saying, Anak, I need you to surrender that to me. Whether that's a sinful pattern in your life, maybe that's you holding on to that unforgiveness or you know, that, that, that hurt and pain, not to diminish what you went through. But I believe the Lord is saying right now, Anak, I believe today is the day that you let it go so that healing can take place, so that you can experience what I have for you. And let me just pray, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand, but I believe there's some of you here today who need to surrender before the Lord and bring it before the fire. Lord, in the name of Jesus, whatever that is, in your own words right now, begin to repent before the Lord, begin to surrender before the God. Lord, I surrender to you. Lord, I repent, Father God, of this sinful way, this sinful mindset that I've, I've been having. In the name of Jesus right now, Father, I pray that you would bring about your forgiveness, that you would bring about your restoration, Lord God, that we may walk in freedom, that we may walk in unity. Lord, thank you, Father God, that we don't have to hold on to the hurts, to the pain, to the offense that a fellow brother and, or sister in Christ has done to us. Lord, we surrender it to you today. Lord, even right now, bring about a healing. Bring about a healing in the hearts and the souls of your people today, that they may walk with their heads up high, looking forward to rebuilding once again relationships with people in our church community so that all of us may experience life in you, a life to the full. So Lord, thank you right now for every person in this place. Thank you, Lord God. I speak a blessing. Lord, I thank you, Father, that, that as we leave this place, Lord God, that we would walk Lord God, knowing that we are not alone, that we have people who can walk with us, who can encourage us, who we can share our lives with. And Lord, we pray that as we would walk in that love and kindness towards one another, when we, as we go back to our homes, to our offices, to our campuses, Lord God, may the people around us as well see Christ in our relationships with one another. May they be drawn to Christ because of our relationships with one another. So I speak your blessing once again upon everyone here in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Before you leave, to my left, to your right, we have this corner here. Again, if you want to get connected, please do be intentional. Some of our leaders and pastors will be here to connect with you, to meet with you. Just go on over here, all right? God bless you. See you next week. Oh, hi, guys. Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if you are here. We hope that today's message will bless you. It'll encourage you. It'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us, whatever. Just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. God bless you.